Our function is on uh, two-dimensional arrays and for that I have this little program here it's called uh, the classes array test and the main method has one integer two-dimensional array a1 it has uh, these rows 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 1 2 3 there it has those rows the first thing that I want to create is first I want to create a class called arrays that has static methods to operate with arrays and I will illustrate some of the some of the operations with two-dimensional arrays via those methods so the first thing that I will do is to create um, is to create a method called swap call which will swap uh, column whatever I put here with column whatever I put here and whatever array I put here okay so in this case this should swap column 0 with column 1 in a1 this is a1 if we want to swap column 0 with column 1 basically all these values 1 5 9 should be on the second column and 2 6 1 should be uh, at the front and the first uh, row I'm sorry the first column yeah the first column not the row and uh, <coughs> Excuse me, and then the output would look like this. Let's compile and run this. See, it looks like this. Here we have 261 on the first column and 159 on the second column, which is swapped these two columns right here. How, how this is done? How this is done is like this. I'm just going to move this down so it's not distracting. The way this is done is I create a method public static void swap call that's the function it's void because it didn't return anything I will take in the uh, source column and the target column if you will and then the array I'm gonna call this array c1 and c2 and then what I have to do to swap columns in this array here is to go through every row for each of the rows of this array and I will make I will swap one element of that row with with the uh, one element in that row one element at the target column with one element from the source column or one element of c1 with one element of c2 whatever they are they can be the first and the second or any any two rows so what I'm going to do is like, like I said loop this loop goes from i to i less than array dot length that is the number of rows right so this loop i i is going to go over the rows and for each row, I'm going to create a temp variable in which I'm going to put the element on column C1 at that row. <coughs> then in place of that, I'm going to put the element of column 2 at that row. And then in place of the element of, col of column 2, which I just moved to column 1, I'm going to put the temp, which basically was what was there before in column 1. Basically, this routine swaps the two numbers, okay? And this is what I do for every single row, and that's how that method works. Let's look at another method here. Um, let's see. I'm going to get the argmax. So, for example, in this array, or in this array, the maximum element here is 9 but the argmax is the argument that maximizes this in other in other words the argmax is not the actual number but it is how do i get to that number basically what's the column and what's the row of that number okay so max finds the maximum number argmax tells you how to get to that number okay so there is this function arrays argmax a1 um basically argmax is the function and a1 is the array that I want to find the argmax so and then it'll return a string and this should this should basically uh, this works like this let's um, let's look at it working first if we run it here we have it we have um, the array got the column swapped so the maximum is 9 here and that is on row 2 0 1 2 
column one, zero one, right? So this is exactly what it says. This is the string produced by argmax. It says the maximum is nine, add max row two and max column one. Okay, so it tells you where it is. So this tells you where the maximum is, well, and also what the maximum is, but argmax usually um, is a uh, lingo to signify where is the maximum. So how does how how is this one done? Well, let's move this this code a little bit up here, and we'll see. What argmax does is that first it initializes the maximum row at zero, the maximum column at zero, and the maximum number at a very low number, in this case zero. I assume that my array only contains positive numbers. Now, for each row, right, for each row, row less than the number of rows, for, and then for each column, column is less than, than the number of columns, right, for, for the given row. For, so for each row and for each column, when you have two for loops, you, you can also read it as for each element in the array. I will be looking at whether that the, the element of the array at that row and column is greater than the maximum number so far. If it is greater, so basically it's greater, uh, if it's greater than that maximum number, then that maximum number will become the array at row and column. Basically, I will set the maximum number to be this new element that was better, that was greater than the previous maximum, right? I'll set this new, new maximum to be that. And I will, uh, I will record the row and the column at which that happened, the row and the column, the current row and current column. So then as you visit each element of the array, each element of the array, if that is greater than the current maximum number, then I will change the maximum number to be that to be that number or to be that element of the array and I will record the row and the column of which has happened. After I'm done visiting the whole array, I just return a string max, max num, at max row, at max call. Lastly, another method that I would like to, um, to show you, so we can swap columns. We can inspect each element of the array uh, and do something with it, okay? Either a kyvet or something. We can know which row and which um, column it happened. Now we can also set elements of an array in some you know artful if you will displays. What this here does is I'm gonna comment these other two um, these other two tests. What this method here does I'm saving, compiling and running What this one does is basically draws an X on any given array, on a car array. So I create a car array, new car 55. Now, this is a 5x5 five five array of nothing, okay? Or whatever the default for character is. But if this is an array of objects, then it's a 5x5 five five, uh, nulls. So this is not filled out, and I need to fill it with spaces and stars. So it looks like this when I print it. For that, I have a method called fill X that will basically draw, draw an X here. And the way that method works is like this. These are my print array routines. And here's the fill X method. Fill X takes in a car array, just like the one that I'm filling in. And then for each row, right, for each row, um, until row is less than the number of rows. And for each column, until column is less than the number of columns here, basically, again, I have the two for loops, so I read it for each element of the array. If the column is the same as the row, so for example, the diagonal, right? The column is the same as the row. Or the column is equal to the total number of rows, which is array.length minus one, which is array.length minus one. That's the total number of rows, starting from zero, right? So if the column is equal to the row, meaning the diagonal, or the column is equal to the, the total number of rows minus the current row. So for example, for row zero, it's the total number of rows minus zero, which is this one. For row number one, it's the total number of rows 
minus 1. For row number 3 is the total number of rows minus 3. For row number 4 is the total of row numbers minus 4. And for row number 5 is the total of rows minus 5, which means 0. Right? So if the column is equal to the row, or if it's equal to the total number of rows minus the current row, then I'm going to put a star. Otherwise, I'm just going to put a space. And that actually results in this beautiful x. I hope you uh, take these uh, methods, try them out. Uh, if you want to print the array to print an int array, you can loop through the rows and the columns and just print spaces. And then after you're done with the columns, you just print a new line and then start printing the new column. See, this, this print line is within the the loop that goes over the row. So for each row, you're going to go for each column of that row, printing it and then printing a space next to it. And then after you're done with the columns, you print line and then you go on to the next row. You do the same thing with a uh, character array. The only thing that changes is that this should be car as opposed to int. And that's all. Please try these methods and, uh, and test them and create new ones.